Hey, Shalom Wam, Israel. First off, I'd like to say, call Halal, Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shah by Hashem, Rakakodash. I'd like to give double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone who taught me. Also, would like to say peace, blessings, and salutations to the hopeful elect. The Akim is pushing his word in all sincerity and faith throughout the four corners of the earth. For the few uh, sincere sisters that watch and believe, Shalom to you as well. All the new believers coming into the uh, faith, uh, Shalom to you as well. Uh, just back in the spirit of another lesson, uh, I was just meditating on the fact that there's only going to be a few people that's going to make it out of the most horrendous destruction ever known in the history of the earth. The only other thing that's comparable that we always cite as an example is during the time of Noah and the flood. Because at that time, uh, the, the Most High flooded the entire inhabited earth and only saved eight people. Noah, his three sons, and their wives. And they were known as the remnant at that time. So, of course, there's going to be a remnant or an election saved on this go-round uh, in the destruction via thermonuclear missiles by fuel of fire. Of course, the 144,000, but also the one-third of the nation of Israel, they're going to be the remnant that's going to be taken from the earth in the midst of the destruction. So it's really key for those who can understand and receive this word, just build up your spirit of faith and, and prayer and humility and just take those diligent steps to make sure your calling and election is sure. Because it's only the, the scripture says through much tribulation, we enter into the kingdom of heaven. So it's going to be real. It's going to be a, a tightrope, so to speak, man, in this in this walk of faith. You know, on one side, like the scripture says, light, uh water. And on one side, fire. So you have to walk a straight path. And Lord willing, through the spirit, I'll illustrate through precepts, you know, the time that we're coming into and the things that we need to be meditating on, constantly examining our spirit so that we can be found worthy to be one of those few that get pulled out of this place as a remnant, man. But, but without further ado, rather, I'll just read the first scripture here in Matthew, the seven the seventh chapter and I'll start at the 13th verse and in the title in the blue letter it has it for this particular two verses 7, 13 and 14 it says the narrow and wide gates it says verse 13 enter ye in at the straight gate and the way that that word straight is spelled is s-t-r-a-i-t and when you go into it that means a position of difficulty and the scripture says in Sirach the second chapter uh, when you come to serve the Lord, prepare your soul for temptation. So it's not going to be an easy road to salvation. The scriptures also says that the righteous shall scarcely be saved, man. So even if you rock, if you're taking the correct steps, it's going to be a tough course. It's going to be a difficult path. And only few men are going to be able to get through that path, you know, and to, to complete their course. It says, enter ye in at the straight gate. For wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go in thereat. So the broad way which leads to destruction, many go that way. The scripture says, uh, follow not a multitude to do evil. Most likely, if it's a lot of people, you know, in agreement and doing something, you may want to look the other way. You know, that's something that I've heard, you know, over time. But that's true. Much more so... In the, in, the, in, the, in the context of the scriptures and the true gospel and doctrine are uh, going out. You know, there is a true way to walk. But most people, they're going to walk after the ways of, of Satan, the spiritual demon Satan, which is contrary to the ways of the Heavenly Father. And that's the way that leads to destruction, because ultimately the ways of Satan, the, that's the wage of sin and the wages of sin is death. So. Going in the straight gate, following Yahweh Shah, having to keep the law, statutes, and commandments to the best of our ability through faith, having to preach the word, having to keep a certain code of conduct and a standard, you know, within this world, that's a that's a tough choice. But that's why there's only a few uh, men, namely the election, that's going to be willing to follow the Lamb, whether so ever he goeth. Like they say that that commercial back in the day, the the, the I believe it was the Marines. The few, the proud, the Marines. So the Lord, he's only dealing with a few good men. You know, this thing is not all inclusive to everybody. The Lord is only dealing 
with a remnant. You know, starting with the 144,000. Re, I'll read verse 14, Matthew 7 and 14. It says, because straight is the gate and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life and few there be that find it. And I may just go ahead and put the title of that last uh, sentence. It says, because straight is the gate and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life and few there be that find it. So it's only a few people that's going to find the way to go. And the way has been uh, taught through the scriptures. That's why it says in Isaiah 30 and 20, the, the teacher shall not be uh, removed into a corner, but thine eyes shall see thy teachers. And they shall basically tell you the way to go. Walk ye in it. I'm loosely paraphrasing. So the way to go has been confessed through the prophets, through the true teachers, man. But only uh, a few people are going to find that way, that straight gate, that narrow path, which leads to life. There's going to be a lot of casualties, man. There's going to be a lot of death. A lot of these, these so-called Christians in the churches, they don't uh, give that, that harsh dose of reality as pertaining what the scripture says. But we just have to, 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 to speak it how it truly is so that our people can repent while we have this time of grace. Knowing that there's only going to be a few people saved, man, in this destruction. This is uh, one of my favorites right here, 2 Ezra 5 and, and, and 1. And I'm going to read a couple of scriptures out of 2 Ezra. This is 2 Ezra 5 and 1. It says, nevertheless, as concerning the tokens, and another word for tokens is signs. You know, the signs that the Most High showing from the heavens that certain prophecies is coming to pass. That's how we're able to measure the times diligently in itself. We know that we're that much more closer for the destruction and the deliverance. The salvation of the elect. It says, nevertheless, as concerning the tokens, behold, the day shall come that they which dwell upon earth shall be taken away in a great number and the way of truth shall be hidden and the land shall be barren of faith. So that's the time that we're in. You know, the way of truth is hidden because it says in Corinthians, if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. So even though the truth is in plain sight, only the election is set up to receive this truth, man. And, and, and through that process of understanding and learning the truth, you know, they're going to grow in faith to keep the standard of the Most High to the best of their ability. That's what the elect is going to come in the mindset to do. But the majority of this world, they're bearing a faith. They don't believe that Great Babylon America is going to be destroyed. They don't believe that the things that they're doing that's contrary to the scriptures they don't believe that there is any error in those ways, man. And because of that, a lot of people, they have to die, man. That's just the truth of the matter. And it already happened. I don't know why people get so puzzled at what the scriptures is actually saying when the Lord has already showed that he'll take it there. Like, namely, you know, the, the example with Noah, man. That's why I always like to bring that up, man, because that's really... When you really meditate on that, that's heavy, man. The Lord basically killed everybody and left eight people. That's the quick math of it. This is a second Ezra's eight and one. It says, and he answered me saying, the most high had made this world for many, but the world to come for few. So the world to come, which is the kingdom of heaven, which the kingdom of heaven is going to be played out on the earth. It tells you that in the Lord's prayer in Matthew, the sixth chapter. But this world, which is under the vibration and control and spirit of Satan, is for everybody. Everybody has a platform to spew their madness and their perverseness and their wickedness, you know. But the world to come is only going to be for a few. And that starts with the deliverance. Because in the midst of the destruction, when the majority of this world, especially here in Great Babylon, America, when they're being uh, devastated, and brought to their demise, there's only going to be a few chosen of the elect of Israel that are going to be delivered. And we use those notable those notable examples like uh, Noah just as a faith booster to increase our faith. Those are examples. The things which are written aforetime were written for our learning. That's what it tells you in Romans, the 15th chapter. That'll help us uh, get renewed in the spirit of faith and hope to complete our course, man. 
despite all of the, the different adversities and, and pitfalls and obstacles that we go through, you know? I'm going to go to this here in uh, Hebrews, the 11th chapter. Uh, I'll, I'll start at 6. Hebrews 11 and 6, it says, but without faith, it is impossible to please him. And that's what it all starts with. It starts with faith. That's why Yahweh Shah said, when I uh, shall return, uh, shall I find faith? I'm loosely paraphrasing. And there's only a few people that through their actions and their deeds are displaying faith. And that's the elect of the nation of Israel, starting with the, the prophets, the 144,000 men that's devoting their lives to teach this word and push this truth, to push a very unpopular message, you know, in a land full of hostility towards uh, righteousness. So that takes a, a great level of faith. And that's what's possible. You have to have faith to please the most high. Ultimately, it says, but without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to the Most High must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Because we're not doing what we're doing for nothing, man. This is excitation for the brothers that are going in, man, and thinking that we're just working in vain. It tells you in Hebrews, the sixth chapter, that the Most High is not unrighteous to forget our, 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 our work and our labor of love, man. We're going to be rewarded. Just like Noah was during the time of the flood. Noah was out there building for over 120 something odd years and there was a lot of unbelievers and, and scoffers coming up against Noah but Noah having to go through what he had to go through he was rewarded when it counted the most and that's what we're banking on we're going to be rewarded when it counts the most verse 7 here's the point it says by faith Noah being warned of the most high of things not seen as yet moved with fear and that's what we're in the spirit to do, you know, the hopeful elect. We've been warned of the most high of things that have not been seen of yet because we can see it through the spirit. We can already see the prophecies in the spiritual realm of things. It's just a matter of time before they play out. That's why we're compelled in the spirit uh, to, to get our people to repent through the terror of the most high we persuade men. That's why we move with fear to, to make our bodies a living sacrifice to, to, to preach the word. It says, by faith, Noah, being warned of the most high of things not seen of, as of yet, moved with fear, prepared an ark to the saving of his house, by the which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness, which is by faith. So Noah, he was going in and he was rewarded for his uh, work of faith and showing that fear of the Lord, which the Beginning of wisdom is the fear of the Lord. Most of this world, as we know it, they don't have any fear in the Heavenly Father, the creator of all things. But the fear of the Lord is about to be reintroduced into the earth. And you can see it in small pockets that that, that spirit is already being stirred up, man. I'm going to just go into something else that I like in the scriptures about Noah. This is in the Apocrypha in uh, Sirach or Ecclesiasticus 44. In 17, it says, Noah was found perfect in righteousness in the time of wrath. He was taken in exchange for the world. Therefore, was he left as a remnant unto the earth when the flood came. So Noah, for being righteous in the sight of the heavenly father in the time of wrath, he was taken in exchange for the world at that time. And it says, therefore, was he left as a remnant. So Noah and his household, they were left as a remnant unto the earth when the flood came, man. So the Lord at that time, he was dealing with a remnant and he's only dealing with a remnant at this appointed time, man. He just made a vow that he would no longer destroy the earth by water anymore. But this time, the second death is going to be by fuel of fire. I'll read this and I'll, I'll end out the short lesson. Because we got a lot of scoffers and mockers, namely this guy, Vocab Malone, man. I seen him uh, visit the Sakari Israelites out there in San Diego, I believe. And he was just being a complete demon. The brother was, you know, cutting him in the scriptures. But, you know, of course, Satan always tries to use carnality to draw out emotion, you know. So it looked like a hot mess at the end of the day. But that's just one faction of scoffers who are going to try to come up against the true men of the Lord, man, you know. But 
this is all part of the package. We know what lies on the other side, man. You know, because we already can perceive, we can already foresee the evil, man. Right now, we're in the land of gross darkness and we had a light. So we can say, we can see our way keenly through this place, man. You know, that's why we're visionaries in the spirit, man. That's why we're preparing while others can't see it. And it's going to be beautiful. It's going to be beautiful when it, it all pays off, man. That's why we have to hold fast to the faithful word. I'll read this. Uh, Second Peter three and three. It says, knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days scoffers walking after their own lust, just like during the time of Noah, eating, drinking, being merry, marrying, giving into marriage, scoffing, mocking, gainsaying trying to slander and find a way to trip us up. That's all going to happen to the true prophets, man. That's an indication that you're teaching the truth. If you have these type of demonic factions coming up against your, your, your word. And it's really the word of the heavenly father through his son, Yahweh, why Yahweh shot. We're just the messengers. It says verse four and saying, where's the promise of his coming? Because that's what a lot of people say. When is all these doom and gloom things that, you forecasting out here on these highways and byways, when is, when is all this going to happen? But slowly but surely, things are starting to happen. So people are going to have to wisely consider what the prophets are out speaking, you know, through the spirit of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah, through this word. It says, for since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of the creation. So it's no, the time we're in now is no different from the time of Noah, man. You got the same spirits back playing their position it says for this they willingly are ignorant of and you got a lot of people in great babylon america they're willingly ignorant you have israelites that are willing uh, that are willingly ignorant because that word ignorant it means to not know a lot of our people they don't want to know what's coming i don't, don't want to hear that you know i don't want to hear that doom and gloom they just want to hear smooth things man and they have a saying uh ignorance is bliss you know, because when you know certain things, you have to be accountable for what you know. That's why King Solomon said in Ecclesiastes, as I increase in uh, wisdom, I increase in uh, sorrow and grief. I'm loosely paraphrasing. But it says for this, they willingly are ignorant of that by the word of the most high, the heavens were of old and the earth standing out of the water and in the water. Whereby the world that was then was being overflowed with water perished. So that's talking about the first death during the time of Noah. You know, by water, the, the earth was overflowed and perished, except for the remnant, those eight souls. It says, verse seven, it says, but the heavens and the earth, which are now talking about the time frame that we in now. But the heavens and the earth, which are now by the same word. By that same spirit, through that same spirit of prophecy, it says, by the same word are kept in store, reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. So the world as we know it, especially great Babylon, is reserved unto fire, man. And those who uh, are ungodly men, ungodly souls, those that are not part of the election, they're going to be destroyed by fire. That's just the truth of the matter, man. So what manner of man are you to be? Matter of fact, I'll read that just a few verses down for those Israelites uh, who can understand and receive this word. Knowing all of these things that's going to happen, you have to uh, move and act accordingly. This is a uh, second Peter three and 11. It says, seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved. And that's talking about the elements and the earth as we know it here in America from the thermonuclear destruction. It says, seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of persons ought ye to be in all holy conversation and godliness? And when you go into that word conversation in the Greek, it's anastrophe. It basically means your conduct or behavior. So what type of behavior are you to display knowing that all of this destruction is, is being reserved and is prepared for great Babylon? So, Lord willingness edified and, you know, just exhorted brothers through the spirit just to, you know, examine ourselves, just to make sure that we're doing everything possible, putting our best foot forward 
to make our calling and election sure so we can get saved at the hell out of here as that remnant, man. Just like during the time of Noah, man. You know, we're spiritually building an ark at this appointed time, you know. That 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 ark that's being built is, is spiritual, you know, with us making our bodies a living sacrifice, you know, out there preaching the word, putting up these videos, you know, brothers repenting and changing their whole lives, giving up, you know, our lives that we had in this world to serve the Lord. It's going to pay off in the end. So with all being said, I want to give all praises to Yahweh Ba'ashim, Yahweh Shah Ba'ashim, Rakakudash, double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone, Shalom, peace and blessings to the elect.